Welcome to your UA Light Celestial Insight. Hello, dear Sagittarius. So I have to say, dear Sag, that you may want to sit down for this reading. There's a sort of like urgency and seriousness coming through um, from your loving and guiding and benevolent ancestors in this reading. And um, also very clearly that the ancestors coming through are grandmother spirits, right? Um, grandmother spirits and that for many of you, particularly those of you who come from families of immigrants, right? Um, that these are the grandmothers who, you know, many of you may have memories with, right? Someone who took care of you when you were young, who knew herbal remedies and the deep wisdoms of your cultures. And, you know, someone who nurtured your spitfire spirit and who you even take after in terms of having a sort of spitfire spirit, right? And um, the guidance really for this year is that you're really urged to do deep healing work, to do deep healing work. While in your Jupiter in Aries, your head um, psychic reading, the message came through really clear that 2023 will be a year where you really reap great rewards for a lot of work well done and for things that you've been working on for a very long time. And um, that you will still be working on for a good chunk of the year. The loving ancestor advice and support you're receiving in this message is really about you overcoming imposter syndrome with something that you've taken on, right? And that this year is really related to you increasing your self-confidence and patience while in the process of working on projects that will bring these sort of great rewards this year. And that it's also about truly uprooting your inner saboteur and how you may not be aware of how it's connected to survivor's guilt somehow, right? And, you know, the message is also that 2023 is going to be about you needing to develop healthier ways to self-soothe while you're dealing with these self-confidence issues that may be exacerbated from you having lost these people, these ancestors even, and others who were security blankets for you, right? Or while, you know, you may be at a distance from loved ones who typically provide a sort of confidence and security for you while you are really working on these goals and taking taking advantage of opportunities, these blessed, these really blessed opportunities that are being placed in your path right now. Many of you are still getting acclimated to a new job, um, a new locale, a new lifestyle, new roles, and new opportunities you've signed up for. And it's sort of really clear that you've leveled up your life and it's requiring you to evolve, right? And that you have sort of signed up to devote significant time investment and to use certain creative and intellectual skills that you have in this new venture, but that you still sort of have imposter syndrome about. And this is despite how incredibly skilled you are at it and how much great feedback and affirmation you actually receive about it. And the message that's coming through here is that deep down, you actually know how promising and rewarding your projects will be and that the opportunities you're currently embracing and the connections you're making will continue to reward you with more opportunities, right, that are going to continue to require this sort of constant leveling up for you, right? And it's like you know this and the root is actually that you have fear of your success, right? How big and grand and lucrative your life actually has the potential to become based on the success of the current projects you're working on and the power of your connections, right? And um, 
you know, we have the nurture card here, we have the opportunity card here, and we have the worth the weight card. While in terms of the magic making cards that sort of gives some insight on what your loving and guiding and protecting ancestors are helping you to even achieve and work on this year, we have the little luxuries card, the self-confidence card, and the protection card. And the little luxuries card reads, generates luxurious experiences and surroundings. And then in terms of self-confidence, strong self-belief and a sense of self-worth. And then protection, strong protective magic for the family and the home. And so um, grandmother as ancestors are really strong and clear in this reading, right? And saying that they are with you on this path, right? There's a sort of clear path illuminated that you are going forward on and that is sort of reflected in this opportunities card. And um, your ancestors are coming through and saying very clearly that they have a hand in placing pets, mentors, and even colleagues in your path to help you achieve your successes, for you to continue your path of healing, and for you to not doubt yourself or sabotage yourself based on survivor's guilt. And this survivor's guilt uh, message came through just like out of the blue very clearly, right? And because imposter syndrome was kind of the thing that first sort of came up, but then it was like, okay, you get deeper to the root of it and they're saying that this is actually connected to some sort of survivor's guilt. And um, this can show up in a lot of ways, right? It's like survivor's guilt can be about maybe surviving a trauma, right? And having unprocessed trauma, right? Related to the certain a certain incident that you survived, right? Um it could be about having unprocessed grief and even resentment from the death of someone that you wish was still here, right? This could be about uh, missing a funeral, right? Or missing some sort of important event um, that was significant, right? It could be about being the most successful in your immigrant family, right? And feeling a sort of indebtedness, right? These are all versions of survivor's guilt and that's coming through really clearly as maybe something that you, that may be like, these may be the sort of unconscious and subconscious roots of your imposter syndrome in ways that you can self-sabotage yourself sometimes, right? And because the high priestess is here, right, next to the nine of cups and the five of cups, this bottom row of tarot cards here, and um, like the energy off of this high priestess card here, like I cannot even lie to you, like, <laughs> like who the, the energy is so strong coming off this high priestess car here that is about you know if you if you look at the top as well this outsider card where there's this little kid that's like outside of this gate and it's like they look in they look in out and it, it looks all wonderful and 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 it's like the creativity card is right next to it in reverse. And it's like the colors of the creativity card are what is on the other side of this gate that this um, kid is like trying to peer through. <laughs> and what this is, it's what it's coming through as is like, it's like, the creativity card in reverse is also sort of like, it's the Empress card, right? So it is also sort of like big divine mother, big grandmother spirit that 
sort of complements this high priestess card and it's like the energy coming off of both of them is like serious and it's like big grandma spirit and big divine mother spirit that is like deliberately not letting you go outside and play till you eat your vegetables kind of energy right it's <laughs> It's like that. And it's like, it's because it's a, there's a sort of divine instruction here with this high priestess card and with this sort of gate, this divine gate that um, it's important for you to really get to the root of any of these issues so that you can truly, truly access the full nine of cups, like success, fulfillment of all of your desires and wishes and all of that, um, that is on its way to you this year, right? Um, in terms of um, dating, in that previous reading, I actually got the message that this would be a year for you to sort of like flirt with life and to like put yourself out there and to really be confident and to... Um, and that maybe dating and all of these kinds of things would be on the table for you. But in terms of the ancestor advice that's actually coming through here, I'm getting that you might actually experience quite a lot of disappointment with dating if you are opening yourself up to it and like actively seeking it um, or in some sort of relationship. And it's the ancestors wanting you to know that this is a part of their doing too. It's like, they don't want you trying to fill any voids with meaningless connections and distractions as a covert and even subconscious or unconscious way of trying to boost your self-confidence. They want you to dive fully into the void and face and deeply heal yourself first to heal core wounds related to confidence and imposter syndrome linked to survivor's guilt and any feeling of unworthiness and more right before seeking relationships right they don't want you to fill any void with superficiality like in any way because the truth is is that they're trying to deliver everything that you want in terms of your goals and your dreams and even your ideals in a love relationship <laughs> to you. But they need you to actually do this deep work on yourself first so that you don't fuck it up. <laughs> So that you don't fuck it up or, or like, like are not in the right, the like energetic vibration to like maintain it, right? Like, like, and to claim it and to really own it, right? I'm getting with this protection card and with this high priestess here, um, and with that gate, you know, this kid is looking out the gate. Like they can't go out there. They, they can't go out there. They can't get this nine of cups. They cannot get this nine of cups until they face the high priestess, which is facing yourself. Right? And it's like, there is a veil of spiritual protection over your life and this golden path that you're on to success this year that is not to be disturbed and sabotaged by even you. And so they don't want you also bringing anybody in your life that could sabotage it either, which would still be you sabotaging <laughs> yourself as well. And it's like, it's because the success of your career projects and fulfillment and love will be worth the wait. Okay, so I'm going to read these nurture opportunity and worth the weight cards to you so it says whenever we sow seeds however much we yearn to see them grow we cannot force them to develop any quicker than nature will allow but we can provide them with the best possible conditions to grow 
Whatever you have initiated in your life, this card is here to encourage you. Be patient and nurture your relationship, idea, and project with love. And I'm getting this is the relationship with yourself. This is the relationship with um, your spirituality, with your healing, your self-growth, um, this confidence that is integral to you also nurturing the success of your projects and opportunities right? And even pets, right? Your spiritual helpers who are along with you. Okay, so the opportunity card reads, this card speaks of new opportunities, although they may not necessarily come in the form that you are expecting. Be alert, look beyond the obvious, be prepared for opportunities disguised as loss. If a new pathway opens for you, trust that it is leading you in the direction that you are meant to go. So that certainly also aligns with this gate, right? It's like, and what I was getting earlier as well, where it's like some of the things that you are engaged in right now are actually meant to lead you to other opportunities um, and, and that it will continue in that way until you get to some really some something it's like some pot of gold at the end of the rainbow kind of shit honestly um which if you look at the cards right this creativity card in, in terms of the colors and then you know those being the colors that are also behind this gate that this little kid is like peering peering through trying to access wanting to get to okay so the worth the weight card says if something is something or someone not moving forwards as fast as you would like this card is here to reassure you hold fast be patient the best things in life are worth waiting for i'm getting that it's gonna continue to get better and better it's only gonna get better and better that's what i'm getting that's what i'm getting with this and um, we have the beauty way card in reverse here. And <sighs> hmm. let's read that for you. So before I read the beauty way card, um, related to this high priestess, nine of cups, this five of cups, it's like this whole bottom row of cards is like I was getting that, you know, you might experience some losses and some sort of divine detours and it, it really being about there being a sort of, I think that's my cat, excuse me, there, there being a sort of spiritual protection over your life and your path, right? That's not to be disturbed and sabotaged and that it is all kind of leading you back to this high priestess. It's like seek spiritual healing services and guidance that are related to esoteric knowledge this year. Like, so things like this, like a tarot reading, right? It's where you're sort of consulting with someone who's highly, highly tapped in, right? Someone who can guide you in the way of really enhancing your psychic abilities, um, it may be engaging in energy healing, even regression therapy, hypnosis, things like this, but certainly delving deeper so that you can develop a sort of consistent practice, right? I'm getting that this, um, this nurture card where it says that, um, be patient and nurture your relationship idea project with love. There's so much about your spiritual growth and development that you're being asked to nurture, right? Especially when the high priestess shows up and when you're also being asked to heal some core wounds, it's like, and where you have unprocessed grief, right? It's like when you nurture that relationship, um, I'm, I'm being drawn back to this car with the kid at the gate, right? It's like you understand that the idea of there being a gate between the veils and there being this sort of 
inability to connect with those people who you've lost, it's like you understand that that's not true, right? You can find peace and solace and totally, totally reconfigure your relationship to death, to grief, by truly exploring ideas about the afterlife, ideas about spiritual connection, and growing your ability to nurture this spiritual connection with people who you might miss, people who are figuring very strongly as helpers on your path as well, right? It's like, yeah, it's like that's just coming through very clearly here. That's coming through very clearly. Okay, so let's see about the beauty way. Okay, so the beauty way is both a path that you travel on and a daily practice. The path is where you choose to perceive only beauty before you, behind you, and all around you as you journey through life. The practice is where you take action to bring beauty to every situation you are in. When things get ugly, you act to bring integrity and peace to the difficult encounter. When everyone else perceives only darkness, you point out the light and help uncover the hidden treasures. All right, so the Beauty Way card in general is really all about reframing experiences. It's about strengthening psychological reframing as a muscle in general. If you are someone who battles, you know, like depression and, you know, some feeling of unworthiness or imposter syndrome, right? Um, so when this card is reversed, which it is here, it's like, it says, stop trying to fix relationships that you believe are broken. Recognize that things are exactly as they need to be in this moment and acknowledge the inherent beauty in that. When you understand this, you will be able to bring about the change you want. Do not engage in gossip about the darkness and flaws of others. And be careful not to be seduced by the superficial beauty of a project or relationship you are toying with unless you are willing to pay a price for it later. Okay. So it all kind of relates back to each other. In general, I'm getting that, you know, you are working on some really incredible and amazing things that are going to reward you. But in the instance that there are any hiccups in anything, a relationship, a project, or anything that you felt was promising, understand that everything is about giving you practice with important skills and with your leadership. So that these are things that you are confident in using in different and better suited opportunities that are going to continue to fall into your path. Now, for some of you, it isn't to say that something that you're working on won't be a success. It might absolutely be a success that then just leads to different and more successful opportunities. But for others of you, I'm getting that for something that you are working on that you do have high expectations for in terms of it being a success, that it might not play out in the way that you expect, but that it will still be about leading you to something better. And none of, none of it is wasted. None of it is wasted. Everything this year will be a divine detour. <laughs> and like redirection that is protection. And that is a mantra that I live by. <laughs> and that is also generally one of the sort of like highest 
it's like one of the highest sort of spiritual lessons that you can grow and evolve into, right? Like being able to master that sort of frame of thought. But that comes through nurturing and building a very strong connection with your spiritual guides because they they reveal these things to you while you're in the midst of them and not always after the fact, right? When that faculty is very strong. They reveal them to you before it happens, right? When that faculty is very strong, right? But in any case, come back to this message anytime that you need reminding, right? <laughs> um, you know, if you experience any sort of disappointment that this is what is happening for you this year. And it is 3.11 on the clock. So that is, you know, just spirit coming through here again. Just be like, listen, take this. It ain't me telling you, it's them, all right? And to wrap up this reading in general, um, there were some angel number messages that came through and that are going to be the sort of loving ancestor advice to sort of wrap this up. These came through at the top of the reading, and these are another way that uh, Spirit speaks to me and speaks to you, okay? And your number that came through was 211, okay? So the sensitive number two blended with the master number 11 is all about spiritual awakening and enlightenment, illumination and mysticism, creativity, in idealism, inspiration and intuition, self-expression and sensitivity. Master number 11 tells us that to connect with our higher selves is to know and live our soul purpose. Number 211 represents cycles of experience and regeneration towards a higher consciousness, knowledge and higher wisdom, sensitivity, education and intellect. And so this is a number of balance and peace coupled with beginning a fresh new direction. It is also a message not to be hindered by old patterns and habits that are in need of change. It asks you to look upon new experiences with optimism as they will bring about positive effects and favorable opportunities. It also helps with achieving your goals and aspirations and allows for the old to be replaced with the new. Angel number 211 is a message to pay attention to your recurring thoughts about yourself and your life. Your thoughts and beliefs are manifesting at a rapid rate. Therefore, ensure that you focus on your desired outcomes only. Hold positive thoughts and an optimistic outlook and high expectations. And you will receive wonderful opportunities and experiences in your life. This is a message from your angels and ancestors that you are on your divine life path and are going in the right direction. And look at that, how we definitely have the path illuminated here and showing up symbolically in the opportunity card, okay? And so it says, have faith and trust that wonderful opportunities will lead to happiness and personal fulfillment for you. Your angels encourage, support, and surround you. And we have the protection card here. All right. Angelic messages will always be heard in divine right time. Listen to your intuition, inner wisdom, and higher self, and you will hear them. Okay. They are just begging to connect with you. And to reassure you, okay, anytime, definitely use this message as one of those things, right? For any of those moments where you need affirmation and confirmation, all right? In general, Sagittarius Collective, I hope that this message was really um, helpful for you. Oh, before I forget. There was also a very clear message that came through that August 20th through the 25th is significant in some way. Maybe you have some sort of, some sort of big event happening or opportunity coming your way or I don't know, like a deadline. I don't know. It's something, but 
August 20th to 25th is, is significant. And that came through in a song. Um, so actually let me know down below in the comments. Come back to this reading um, and let me know what happens around that time. And then also in general, if you are already aware of the significance of that date, let me know what it is down in the comments. Let me know how this resonates in general. I wish you deep, deep healing and grand success this year of 2023. May you shine brightly and get all that you deserve. <laughs> Take care.